listen to the story. So, a lady came to my house, and exactly there, she sat down, she said, well, I, I have to ask you something. I'm like, okay, sure. She says, my daughter, I'll make up a name, my daughter Rachel, um, was really a good girl. She had a best friend, Miriam. And Rachel and Miriam were in, in high school together, and they were from Tznius. They didn't talk to boys. They are both very good girls. They did well in school. She said, they're out of school right now, seven years. My daughter is going out with a non-Jewish guy. Doesn't keep kosher, doesn't keep Shabbos, doesn't do anything. Her friend, who was mamish, they were like buddies. She's in Israel, married to a curly guy. She has two kids. I'm in Wallenstein. How did that happen? How does that happen? Two friends graduated together in the same place, both from my daughter's with a guy, doesn't keep anything, and her best friend is married to a Kylo guy in Israel. But what's in, what does Hashem want from me? What was her question? Okay, and I thought about Rus and Arpa. Two girls, same place. And today, and, 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 and a few years later, one's the great grandmother of David Amalek, and the other one's the, the, the mother of a, of a giant plishti. How does that happen? So I got the perfect story for you to explain it. So, there was a king, and always in the Medrash, kings have beautiful daughters. The Medrash never said a king had an ugly daughter. There's no such thing, because in the Medrash, the king is Hashem, and we're the daughter, we're beautiful. So anyway, there was a king who had, a, had this daughter and he wanted to get a shidduch for her. But there were thousands of guys that wanted to marry her. She was beautiful and she was rich. And whoever marries her becomes a prince and one day the king. So the king didn't know what to do. Who, 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 whose resume should he take? He said, you know what? We're going to make a contest. And he builds a tower a thousand steps high. And each step is not a little step, crazy wide. And he tells, he makes an announcement to the country, whoever wants to marry my daughter who's single, in two days, as the sun sets, there's going to be a race up my new tower. And whoever by sunrise the next morning gets to the top, gets the princess. But if you don't make it to the top, You get nothing. It's not like who wins the race, who gets to the top first. But if you don't get to the top, you don't get nothing. Okay? Everyone's excited. I'm going to get the princess and, right? Comes, sun setting. Thousand guys are running, are going to run up the steps. Everybody wants the princess. Sun sets and the race begins. But there are a lot of guys that were totally very overweight and extremely out of shape and they only could make a hundred steps and they couldn't breathe anymore but they're guys, they don't want to say like I'm fat and I can't breathe and I'm, uh, I'm out of shape and I can't do this so they had to make up a story so they started a story that ah, there's no princess there's no princess in the top of the tower nobody can make it up there it's a trick and the king in the morning is going to sit with all his friends at the bottom of the steps and laugh their brains off at all the idiots that are running up the steps. We can't make it. It's just a joke. There's no princess. He's not getting to a princess because a guy can go up the steps. You want someone educated, handsome. This doesn't make any sense. I'm telling you, the whole thing's made up because they didn't want to say that they can't breathe. And this is going on a whole night. As, as guys were out of shape and they couldn't breathe, they're making up the story and the whole rumor is going and everyone's like, you know what? It's true. We're only up to the 400th step, and there's only a few hours left. It is impossible. It's impossible. So it's true. The king is going to, it's just a joke. So let's get out of here, because we don't want to be the fools. And everybody starts running down. Everybody's running down the steps. Except for the two guys that are in the best shape. And they're on the 700th step. And there's only one hour left. And there's no way you could do 300 steps in an hour. Because the whole night took him to get it to the 700 step. So Chaim, 
turns to Maishi, the two of them are the only two left, and he says, Maishi, let's not be suckers. This whole thing is a joke. Because we didn't stop running. And we're only at the 700th step. And he said, if you don't get to the top, you don't get to Princess anyway. So he knew it was impossible. There's nobody faster than us. I think they're right. I think, and the sun's going to come up, and the king and his friends are going to be laughing at the two guys, the two idiots that thought they could make it. So let's get out of here. We can run down in an hour. We can run down in an hour. And good, we'll teach the king a lesson. We're all his friends. They're going to be looking at steps that are empty. Ha! And the way she says, Nope. I'm not running down. Chaim says, What are you talking about? I'm telling you, the whole thing's a joke. The way she says, I'm going to keep going. He says, What are you going to keep going? You're not, you're not even going to make it to the 800th step. She says, I have to tell you something, Chaim. I worked for the king for five years in the castle. There's two things you need to know about this king. One, he has no sense of humor. He doesn't make jokes. This is definitely not a joke. He don't laugh and he don't make jokes. So this is not a joke. Yeah, yeah, but we can't make it. We can't make it. He says the second thing about the king, he never lies. Ever. Ever in five years, one thing we all know, if he says something, it's true. So I don't understand what's going on here. There's something we don't know, but it's not a joke. And it's not a lie. Chaim says, Maishi, you want to be the only guy left here? I'm going to be on the bottom laughing at you too. And he turns around and he runs as fast as he can down the steps. And Maishi standing there by himself. And he's looking up at the top of the tower, and he's like, I know the king. King don't make jokes. King's word is a word, but, but I can't get up there in, in an hour. You know what? Maybe because I'm the only guy left, the king will break his rule and let me marry her because I got the highest. Maybe. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to use that hour that I have left, and I'm going to keep going. Wherever I get to, I get to. But at least I did my best. And he takes the next, this story changed my life. And he takes the next step on the 701st step and there's a trigger. It's a movable step and it triggers and all of a sudden the steps in front of him open up. And an elevator comes out. And meanwhile he turns and his friend is chugging down, Chaim's chugging down the steps because he doesn't want to be up there. And he screams to Chaim, Oh my gosh! Chaim! Elevator! Chaim's running down, he hears, Arr! Oh my God, my friend Maishi fell off the steps. And he's chugging, chugging. He gets into the elevator. There's a rose, a bottle of champagne, two glasses, two candles, and a button that says P on it, the letter P. And he says, Oh, that's cool. Penthouse, princess, I'm not sure. And he pushes it. And the doors close. Elevator goes underneath the steps. And there's a track. Like an express train. This thing is zooming. Comes up to the top. The doors open. As the sun is beginning to rise. He steps out of the elevator. And girls, as he steps out of the elevator to the top floor, his friend steps off the last step on the bottom. Two guys in the same place, in the same moment. And now, an hour later, one is at the top. And one is not even on the bottom. He's totally off the steps. And he opens the door. And standing there is the most beautiful woman he ever in his life dreamt of. And she says... Thank you so much for making it. And he looks at her and says, I'm a farm guy. I'm a peasant. You're the princess. No, thank you. She goes, no, you don't understand. My father said that if no one makes it, I will be stuck up here for the rest of my life by myself. 
And I saw the two of you on the 700 step. And I knew the elevator was in 700, but I, I wasn't allowed to interfere. And I saw the two of you talking. I'm like, take one more step. Just one more step. I was thinking, she could have yelled. She wasn't allowed to do that. But she was like, I was praying, take one more step. And then your friend turned around and he started running down. I'm like, whoever that guy is on the 700 step, please don't turn around. Because if you turn around, I'm stuck here for the rest of my life. And you took the next step. Thank you so much. And by the way, there's something my father didn't tell anyone. Because he thought maybe more than one guy would make it. I want to introduce you to someone up here that's with me. He says, who's here with you? She says, I have a twin sister. That was for the second guy. And he runs to the door and he screams all the way down a thousand steps. Chaim! Twin sister! And Chaim hears, Arr! Oh my God, he fell again. Chaim has nothing. And my she has everything. So I told the story to the parent of this girl that's off the derech, and I said, Tell me. You tell me. I don't want to tell you. You tell me. What's the difference between Chaim and Maishi? Why did one guy give up and one guy keep going? There's only one difference, girls. Anyone know the difference? Come on, smart girls. What's the difference between the two? What'd you say? He what? Oh, come on. Everybody who's watching on Torah and Tablet, I know the answer. What's the difference between the two? What? You got it. Must be my niece. <laughs> one knew the king, one didn't. One knew the king's not a joker and not a liar. The other one had no idea, no relationship with the king. So I said to this lady, I said, it might have looked like that the two of them were in school, Beis Yaakov, graduated. The other girl knew the king, your daughter did not. That's the difference. You can go through school the whole time, do your subjects, get a hundred, be valedictorian. You have no relationship with Hashem. You're a subject matter person. If you know the king, the king is not a joker. Hashem is not a joker. He doesn't have a sense of humor. And his word is the word. So if the king tells you you can do it, you can do it. 